Okay, let's jump right in. How to create a muscle-driven simulation of running. And we talked about this in detail in chapter 10, so I'm just going to do it briefly here. A graduate student at the time, Sam Hamner, created muscle-driven simulations of running by first measuring the body segment motions, ground reaction forces, and EMG patterns of key muscles as experienced runners ran on a treadmill at 2, 3, 4, and 5 meters per second. Sam then scaled this generic musculoskeletal model to match the size of each subject based on the marker locations that we placed at anatomical landmarks. We then calculated joint angles over the gait cycle using inverse kinematics using the algorithms that you studied in chapter seven. We then did inverse dynamics to calculate joint moments like we described in chapter eight, and then estimated muscle activations needed to generate those moments using the computed muscle control algorithm that you can find in chapter 10. At each stage, we assessed the accuracy by comparing the simulations to the experimental data, including all the body segmental motions, EMG, and everything we could measure. Finally, we used an induced acceleration analysis to see how we could interpret muscle function. So let me show you what we've learned. First, let's look just at the activations of key muscles, gluteus medius, rectus femoris, vasti, and soleus. They're plotted here. So it's the EMG activity, or activation of the muscle, versus percentage of gait cycle. Now this is running, so let's reorient a little bit. In running, the stance phase is short, and the flight phase is long. So let's look first at the vasti. It's shown here, it's highly active early in stance. You see the activation is high, and then that muscle shuts off. It turns on again in late swing just before foot contact. Soleus is slightly delayed from vasti. You see it um, on in blue here, highly active in late stance. So there's soleus activation, and then it is off for the rest of the gait cycle. Rectus femoris is interesting because it blips on during stance, just like the other quadriceps, but you see rectus femoris active early in this swing cycle to accelerate the limb forward. So you see rectus femoris active here, pulling the limb forward. You also see soleus, oh, we've seen soleus, uh, gluteus medius, okay, here we are, gluteus medius up here in the hip. It's active during stance. Uh, and then it's also slightly active during swing. Part of the gluteus medius is anterior to the hip and, and can flex the hip, and that can be valuable as well. So those are the activations. Let's look at what these muscles are doing. So here we have uh, the gluteus medius, and you see it's basically providing body weight support. So what I'm plotting here is the total ground reaction force and how much is provided by each muscle. So one thing to notice is that the ground reaction forces in running are much higher than they are in walking. Here's one body weight, so we're above two body weights. Quadriceps make big contributions supporting body weight and it's in the backward direction. So when you're turning on your quadriceps, they're providing body weight support, but they're also decelerating your mass center. Soleus, you see here, is providing body weight support and pushing you forward. Now, because the stance phase is so short in running, these muscles have to come on at the same time. Remember, you're, you're only on the ground for two to three tenths of a second. So these muscles all just come on, burst, generate those forces, and propel you into the flight phase. So let's look at the gluteus maximus and gastrocnemius here. So they're both on during stance. Here is the gastrocnemius here, his gluteus maximus here. So you see Gmax in orange. So it is on during the stance phase, and you see it contributing to body weight support. Gastrocnemius is excellent at providing body weight support and propelling you forward. So again, you see these active simultaneously. First Gmax, and then gastroc, but they do overlap in time and overlap somewhat in function. The final plot I'm showing here is the total ground reaction force and that provided by muscle. 
And remember in walking, muscles provided most, but not all, because there was some support provided by the skeleton. In running, that's not the case. In running, all of the ground reaction force is induced by muscle. So you can see that ground reaction force produced by muscle and measured by a load cell are essentially identical. So the arms influence running dynamics. Muscle-driven simulations revealed that the, the arms do very little for body weight support and forward propulsion, right? You can't really generate much ground reaction force this way. A little bit, but not much. What the arms do is a very important function. What's plotted here is the angular momentum about a vertical axis for the arms at two, three, four, and five meters per second. And what you see is they perfectly counteract the angular momentum of the legs. So you see they're equal and opposite. Now the legs are more massive, so the arms have to move more quickly to generate the same angular momentum about this vertical axis. You could feel what the difference is if you try to run with your arms crossed across your chest, it will be very difficult, but your arms naturally counteract the angular momentum generated by your legs. So while they don't propel you forward they, or support body weight, they have an important function in counteracting your legs. Okay, so we've talked just a little bit about creating muscle driven simulations, what the muscle actions are. We'll move next to transition between walking and running.